Maria Shavalova is a lecturer at National University of Kiev, Moilia Academy. She joins us from an undisclosed location near Kiev. Maria, thank you so much indeed for your time. Um, what was last night like? Was there bombing? Thank you so much. Yes, we spent this night on a bomb shelter because each night we are severely bombed. I can say that this night we were lucky because this night we have only few alarms and few bombardments because usually we might have more than eight air attacks for the night. Yeah, it's interesting. The UK's defense ministry has just said that as far as it's concerned, there has been a notable decrease, they're saying, in overall Russian air activity in recent days. Do you plan on staying where you are or would you like to leave that area around the capital? I am planning to stay. It's very risky to get on the road and it's very important right now to keep... St I, I know that sounds very, uh, very unusual, but it's important for civilians to keep... Uh, to keep staying really calm and stable. Despite everything, I paid my taxes, I am paying my bills, I am keep working from my shelter when I have internet. So I'm I'm really think that it's my support of the stability. I don't want to leave my home and a lot of people who I love, my relatives I are fighting right now I in, in Kyiv. I am all the time trying to find equipment for them. For example, right now I'm looking a bulletproof vest for my brother. So I need to cover backs of people who are fighting for me right now. So I'm, I'm definitely planning to stay. So these are presumably civilian relatives you're talking about who have taken up weapons for the very first time? Not the first time they had some military experience, they were serving in army, they were trained, so they volunteered because they were able to do that. But they are not soldiers, but they have some certain trainings. Maria, is there enough food and water? Yeah, it's, in our place it's okay, but, but we hope, we do not know actually what will be in a week, but right now it's okay. I want to ask you a question which uh, upsets some Ukrainians who I mention it to, and it's a question of whether there should be any concessions from your president. How do you want this to end? Do you want your president to make concessions or do you want to keep fighting against the Russians? We definitely want to keep fighting because we know what is what does it look like to live under Russians. Russians occupied pi, part of Ukraine that was Donetsk and Luhansk district in 2014, and they made their concentration camps for Ukrainians where people are tortured. People are preferred to commit suicide rather than keep staying in that concentration camp. So it's not an option for for us to surrender because they will treat us worse. And if we will stop, they will keep moving and keep attacking other European countries. So right now, it's a very important question of our security and European security. Do you think Vladimir Putin made a miscalculation that he thought that maybe there were more Russian sympathizers in your country than there actually are? I mean, for you to say that you want your country to keep fighting against Russia, I presume that is also a wider feeling amongst the 40 plus million people who live in Ukraine. Did Vladimir Putin miscalculate? Exactly, you're absolutely right. We have polling about support of Ukraine or support uh, of surrender. More, more than 84% of Ukrainians would like to keep fighting, more than 48. Not, not, I'm so sorry, not, for, not 48, 84, more than 84% of Ukrainians. So it's almost, almost 85% of Ukrainians would like to keep fighting. Maria, really appreciate your talking to us on TRT World. And obviously, everybody wishes you the very best. And please stay as safe as you can. Maria Shovalova, near Kiev, somewhere. Thank you, Maria. Thank you for your work.